Hello everyone, welcome back, and thank you for joining us on the Live Unreal with Glover You podcast, where every week, Jeff Glover will dive deep into the questions that you are asking. He understands the challenges you are facing on a day-to-day basis because he still works every day on the front lines of real estate, with him and his team closing over 1,000 homes per year. Today, Jeff will continue the truths about real estate. Truth number four, lead by example versus growing a team. We will learn from Jeff why you should spend less time finding the fastest way to grow a team and more time leading by example. Now, let's hear from Jeff Glover. Hey everybody, Jeff Glover here with Glover U. We are back with another week of the real estate truths of today. So I will wait just a few seconds for everyone to get on before we jump into the next session and of course, For those of you that miss any portion of this, you can always come back and watch it at a later date. So before I jump into the material, we've been working on this, I think now for four weeks. And um, you know, what's what's important about material like this and the reason why we titled it uh, The Real Estate Truths of Today is because so many in the industry, especially in the real estate industry, are telling us things that we want to hear to make us feel good, to make us happy, to make us stay in the business. And not enough people are out there telling us the truth of what needs to be done to succeed at a very high level. And so uh, I I felt I'm very passionate about getting the the truth of what's going on in the business today out there because I don't feel like there's enough people that are doing it. Uh, I think that a lot of people, you know, and I know this, I've been in the brokerage industry now for 17 years. So I've been in meetings where, you know, the management team's goal is do everything we can to keep the agents excited about the business so they don't quit. Well, the reality is, is if we're doing everything we can to keep the agents excited about the business so they don't quit, well, then guess what happens? Somewhere in there, we forget to tell agents the truth. We forget to tell agents the hard stuff, the things that they need to know to succeed because we're afraid that if we tell them the truth, they'll quit, right? So that's why a lot of real estate companies and brokerages are set up today to where a lot of the material or a lot of the discussions are around feel-good stuff stuff that makes you feel good about working for the company or feel good about being in business with that particular brokerage. And the reality is, is that feel good stuff is only temporary. It only, it only lasts for six months, a year, 18 months. It doesn't last a long time because what happens is agents look up and realize, holy crap, I know that they've rolled all this stuff out or they've got all these cool things, but I'm not actually seeing any results of my efforts. I'm not actually seeing a benefit. Uh, you know, I hear, I see the list of, of, of reasons or advantages uh, uh, of of being with this brokerage, but the reality is a lot of it is fluff, right? A lot of brokerages and teams today put out all this fluff to make you feel real good about working there, and the reality is, is most of it doesn't lead to production. So I'm putting out these truths and I'm digging deeper. If you remember, if you haven't had a chance yet, I would go back and watch the very first video. Uh, it was just called The Truth of Real Estate Today. If you go to YouTube or just Google Jeff Glover Real Estate Truth, the very, very first one. It's not It's not the one where I dig deep into truth number one, truth number two. It's the first one that's about 30, 40 minutes long, and I go through about 17 of them. Well, as I mentioned, what I'm doing now is I'm taking, we, we went back and looked at the 17 and identified what we would call the, the, the 12 most important, and I'm digging deeper into those 12 most important. So go back and watch that if you haven't had a chance to. That's where I, where, that's where I go through all 17 of them, uh, and then, of course, now we're digging deeper into each of them. So today's truth truth number four, which is spend less time trying to figure out the fastest way to grow a team and spend more time leading by example, which of course leading by example will attract people to want to work with you. You know, there's this, for some reason, there's been this buzz around the industry the last seven to 10 years around, well, if I want to get to the next level or if I want to succeed, I have to have a team or I have to build a team. You know, the reality is, is that if you, if your belief is that by building a team, you'll be more profitable and you'll have more time, that's a major mistake. All right. So I want, I want you to hear that again. Uh, If you believe that by building a team, you'll be a lot more profitable and have a lot more time because of course everyone thinks, oh, I can just delegate. I can just delegate. I can just delegate. If you think you'll be more profitable and have a lot more time, then number one, you're mistaken. And number two, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. All right. In fact, some of the most profitable agents today are agents that are either A, on teams and succeeding at a high level or are solo agents without any of the other responsibilities. And the reason why I say other responsibilities is because the time spent managing, training, leading, and developing people is almost just as much as time as you're going to spend selling real estate. 
And the reality is, is that if you look at the basics of the real estate industry today, you're you having a team or a team member, they're probably on a 50, 50, a 60, 40, or a 30, 60, or whatever split you have on 30, 60, it doesn't even add up to 100, 30, 70, whatever, they've got a, a large portion of the commission that is going to the agents when you're the one spending the time developing them, your actual net dollar per hour is lower leading a team than it is out producing. So if your thought process is I'll be more profitable and I'll have more time, uh, that is false. That is actually not the case. I would also say that if your thought process of this is why I want to do it, so that way I can be more profitable and have more time than you're doing it for the wrong reason. So why should you um, lead a team? Why, why should you get into that process? Well, it's because at some point in time when you realize that your passion for leading and developing others is greater than your passion for listing and selling real estate, that is when it would make sense to get into leadership and lead other people. Now, notice I said get into leadership and lead other people. I did not say start a team. All right, because so many agents make the mistake, uh, mistake of selling for three years, five years, and having some success. Some are wildly successful, and some of them are just kind of successful, and then they think it just makes sense. Well, I must be qualified to start a team, and the reality is, is that, no, you're missing a step, and that step is learning how to lead, all right? You don't go from real estate salesperson to, to, to building a team. And, and building that side of a business. You have to somehow align yourself with someone that knows how to lead a team so that way you can learn from them how to lead. All right, there's a crucial step in there. Most of you know that I was in real estate sales production from 2003 to 2005, my first couple of years in the business. And then in 2005, I made the decision that I wanted to learn how to lead. I wanted to learn how to train. I wanted to learn how to recruit. I wanted to learn how to manage. And I took a good two to three years step back in income. I mean, I was already at 140 or 150,000 in annual income. I went from 140 to 150 down to 60 couple of years in a row, cut my income in half. Why did I do that? I did that because I knew later in life I would want to have a different looking business and I needed to develop those skills of training, managing, leading. So my advice to anyone that does say, well, I do want to, I want to have my own team, uh, learn how to lead first and get in business with someone that can teach you how to lead first. Don't just go from selling real estate to saying, yep, now I'm a team leader. All right, where, where are the qualifications to get you there? And oh, by the way, when, you're, when you are in leadership, the best form of leadership is leading by example, which is something that I'm going to talk about today. So don't go from selling real estate to building this team out without anything in between. You have to have that training and development in between. And in most cases, you'll get that by working on a team. You'll get that by working with a brokerage that has a reputation of developing leaders right so you got you can't miss that crucial step that that two to three years actually i think it was three and a half year three and a half year step back for me financially is what put me in the position to do what i'm doing today all right so if your thought process is yep i gotta lead a team because i'll have more time and i'll make more money wrong that is not the case maybe you know later in life you can figure out a way to do that but you have to go through a process to get there first it's not overnight it's not just hey i sold 37 homes net last year so hey come work for me i'm now a team leader it doesn't work that way you're better off getting into business with someone that is leading at a high level that you can learn from all right and then hopefully that business is big enough to where your world will fit within their world which goes to another another thing we talk about all the time people think well if I'm not leading my own team, then whose business am I really building, all right? You guys have heard me say this before. At the end of the day, we're real estate salespeople, all right? So I don't, it's not like, you know, I could just turn around and sell JGA tomorrow, right? But my value is in my database. Just like all of our agents, their value is in their database. That is what they own. That is what I own. All right, so this whole idea that, well, I'm really just building someone else's business, or I don't know if it makes sense to be on a team because I'm building a business. No. You have your own business, all right? You, your database is your business. That's all I have, all right? These offices and everything, this is just rent. You know, I pay it now. Of course, I own a few of them, but I, I'm, this is just rent. This is a liability, if anything. I go away. This stuff goes away. So when you hear things like, well, I need to build my own business, what you should be saying is I need to own my database, and I need to master my database, and I need to get a return on my database because at the end of the day, in the real estate sales business, that is all we own. All right, I, you don't own your people, 
You don't own your process. You don't own your marketing. You don't own your space in a lot of cases. That goes away when you go away. All right. Why does that go away when we go away? Because at the end of the day, people go to a grocery store to buy products. All right. And they're going to continue to go to that grocery store because they know that grocery store has products. People hire realtors based on their reputations, based on their personalities, based on things that, you know, that, that they, they believe this person can do to help them. They hire individuals, right? I don't go to the grocery store. I don't know the owner of my grocery store. Uh, you know, I don't know the founder and I don't have a relationship with the founder. I go there to get products. You don't walk into a real estate office to get products. You hire an agent because of who they are. So this whole idea that you own a business is, is just hogwash because the reality is you own a database and those people that you have relationships are all that you own. And oh, by the way, when you go away, you don't even own that because they'll go find someone else to create a relationship with. So this whole idea of, well, you know, I got to do this for me. I got to be on my own. I got to have my own business. No, you don't have your own business. I don't even have my own business. What I have is a database of people that know me, like me, and trust me, and I have to do my best to stay in front of them to continue to get them to keep coming back. All right, so that's a whole other conversation, and you guys know me. I, from time to time, go on tangents. So let me jump into some of my notes on this particular truth. So I wrote down, we need to create the problem. All right. We need to create the problem in this industry. The problem is generating more leads than we can handle. There is no there is no reason why you should grow just for the sake of growing. Right. We have this idea that, well, I had a pretty good year. So now let me go get some people to work for me so I can make more money and have more time. Wrong. We already covered that. You're not going to have your money. You're not going to have more time. And we'll talk about the most profitable team model in a second. If, if you decide that this is something you really want to do. All right, you know, you're totally cool with having less money for several years in a row. You're totally cool with working probably 60, 70, 80 hours a week as opposed to 40 or 50. Then you start with creating a problem. And the problem that you need to create is to have more leads than you can handle on your own. Too many people are making the mistake of building out these teams or building out these businesses without creating a problem. And the problem is generate more leads than you can handle on your own. That will cause you to be attractive. That will cause you to go out in the market and in the community and attract people who want to be affiliated with your business. Don't make the mistake of most people. Go out and, you know, we need a couple of buyers agents. We need a couple of listing agents. We need showing agents. We need staff. We need this. Do not build it until you create the problem. And the problem is that you have more problems than you can handle. All right. I wrote down next. The most profitable pod today, the most profitable team or business in the real estate industry today consists of one agent one showing agent, one inside sales associate, and one administrative person. Four people. All right. There would be a, I'll put an asterisk on a fifth, and that would be a buyer's agent. But the reality is, is you don't necessarily need to have a buyer's agent if you have a strong showing agent. You're handling both listings and sales. Well, wait a minute. Yes. The agent, a showing agent, an ISA, an inside sales associate that makes outbound phone calls, and an administrative assistant. That is without question the most profitable pod. That's why a lot of your bigger teams that have agents making a lot of money are set up to where they have ISAs. They're set up to where they have showing agents for the agents, and those agents that take advantage of those services are making a lot more money than, the, than those that are not. So the most profitable pod today in the real estate industry consists of four people. All right, it's the agent, it's a showing agent, it's an inside sales associate, and it's administrative assistant. I will put an asterisk on the fifth, and that is adding a buyer's agent. But if you have a strong showing agent, you can probably handle all the buyers and, and listing sales as you want, all right, because you've got good support staff behind you. That is without question the most pro profitable pod that exists. When it grows beyond that, the profits actually start to drop. All right, when it grows beyond that, the time that you spend managing actually becomes more involved, and you actually are at a point where your ROI starts to drop. Okay, and that's the mistake a lot of teams make is they spend way more time managing and, and not enough time setting an example. All right, we'll talk about that for a second. Speaking of time managing, or speaking of managing, I had in a conference half-day session of some kind, uh, of some type, someone raised their hand and said, Jeff, how did your team grow uh, to the level it's at today? Like, did you time block for that? Did you set time aside in your schedule? And my response was, no, I didn't need to set time aside in my schedule because I had skill building in there. And who did I do role playing with? I did, I do it with the agents, right? So I didn't need to adjust that because I had that in my schedule anyways. 
I had open door time. There's no doubt. I definitely, and I still do, have time where my door's open. And it's just known that's open door time. But the reality is, to the lady that asked the question, how did you put it in your schedule to manage and grow? And my response to that was, I didn't. My response was, I led by example. And that's how it grew. All right? I stuck to my schedule. I showed up at the same time every day. I role played with my agents. Everything that was in the schedule, I did on a daily basis. And it goes back to what the, the previous point where I said you need to create the problem. And the problem that you need to create is have more leads than you can handle on your own. So I led by example to get me to a point where I can have more leads that I can handle by my own, which then led to the team growing from there. All right? I wrote down a couple questions to consider. How can you expect your people to perform at a high level if you don't? How can you expect your people to perform at a high level if you don't? How can you expect your people to be on time if you're not on time? How can you expect your people to be on time if you're not on time? How can you expect your people to practice their skills if you're not? So for me, it was easy. I, I, I mastered my morning just like I asked them to do. I role played with them. I prospected with them. I went out on appointments. I got people to sign contracts with me, and that caused people to be attracted to what we were doing. I led by example, and that is the best form of leadership that exists today in the real estate industry. How often are you leading by example? And this goes back to this whole idea, well, you know, I want to I want to build a team and have a team so I can get out of production one day. Well, the reality is you're right. You can build a team to where you can get out of production one day. That is one nice thing about this business. The challenge is, is the moment that you're out of production, your value to your teammates drops drastically. Your attractiveness drops drastically. People want to be affiliated with people that are on the ground with them. People want to be affiliated with people that are in the trenches. All right. So the moment you say, I'm stepping out of production to go do this, your value to your team actually declines. It's why you see so many agents today getting back involved in production. Right. I'll, I'll never forget. I'm not going to mention the agent's name because this particular person is local. I'll never forget local to Detroit, I'll never forget I had an agent come up to me and, and essentially, you know, chest puffed out and they were kind of bragging about how they're out of production and how they're working on all these other things. And and I can't believe, you know, at, at your level that you're still in production with your team. Why why are you doing that? And and my response was I have to lead by example. I enjoy sales and therefore I have to lead by example. This whole idea of by the way, that particular person is back in production. Because the reality is the moment you step out of production your team feels like they're just working for you. Nobody wants to feel like they're working for someone, especially in this industry. You have to be in this together. By the way, how can you have any credibility of anything that comes out of your mouth if you're not on the ground every day with your people? All right, so the lady who asked, how do I time block or set aside time to lead the team? The answer is I don't. I just lead by example all day long. And it starts with mastering that morning. All right, so I want you to think about those three questions. How can you expect your people to perform at a high level if you don't? How can you expect your people to be on time if you're not? And how can you expect your people to practice their skills if you don't? You ask them to do, do all these things, but are you willing to do these things? All right, the reality is there's no sh there are no shortcuts to the top. Doing the work is the shortcut. You've probably heard that before. Doing the actual work and leading by example is the shortcut. All right, at the end of the day, you can't buy leadership. You can have a title, but a true leader is a leader through their daily habits and actions, not just because they're carrying that manager title. All right, and that goes back to the whole leading by example. So what I want you to think about in the, in the last, I don't know, 17, 18 minutes we spent together, are you doing it because you want to net more money and have more time? And if you think that you're going to net more money and have more time, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. The only reason why it would make sense. <laughs> nope, that wasn't you, Sarah. Thanks, though. <laughs> the only reason why it would make sense to, to, not, to, to, to do something that I'm doing is because your passion – for training and developing others exceeds your passion for selling real estate. All right, that's the only time it makes sense. And oh, by the way, you still have to stay in production because that is why they join you and that is why they stay because you're on the ground with them. But the reality is don't do it for profits and don't do it for more time because you're already spending 40, 50 hours selling real estate. Go ahead and add another 15 to 20 hours of leadership and management on top of it because the reality is you're gonna spend that much time, if not more, leading and managing and handling God in minutes and so forth. So I hope you got some value out of leading by example versus growing a team. You don't grow until you can lead by example. Stay in production, lead by example, and it'll grow for you. Make it a great day. See you guys. Thank you for taking your time to join Jeff today on the Live Unreal with Glover U podcast. To get started on having an unreal business, take the real estate self-assessment. 
After you complete the assessment, a member of Glover U will get on a call with you to create an action plan to improve your score. Go to www.gloveru.com slash sell. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Search for Live Unreal with Glover U on iTunes, Podbean, or Spotify and subscribe today. Until next time, remember, there are no shortcuts to the top. Doing the actual work and leading by example is the shortcut.